Hi, I'm Dave Gajewski from the Center for Resuscitation Science at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm the clinical director there, and today I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that might be on the future um, in the horizon um, of cardiac arrest care, things like a whole bundle of care, including therapeutic hypothermia, using emergency cardiopulmonary bypass to treat patients whose hearts don't start again during a cardiac arrest, the idea of mitochondrial medicine, uh, an interesting idea called suspended animation, and then the possibility that maybe cardiac arrest care should be treated like trauma and as a regionalized um, health delivery system. So, to introduce all this, I know that you've uh, heard about uh, automated external defibrillators and quality of chest compressions, and we're going to review that a little bit. And to review that, we're going to talk about uh, a commentary that was written in the Journal of the American Medical Association back in 2002 by Myron Weisfeld and Lance Becker. And Lance is the director here at the Center for Resuscitation Science. And what they talked about was for shockable cardiac arrest rhythms, they talked about a three-phase time-sensitive model. And what they meant by this was that there's different phases during an arrest. So this is someone whose heart has stopped beating. They're in what we call a ventricular fibrillation arrest. So the heart is just twitching. And they are someone that can be treated with a shock or a defibrillation. And so they talked about the three phases being an electrical phase, a circulatory phase, and a metabolic phase. And these phases the patient will pass through while they're in ventricular fibrillation. And what they were getting at was that the person's physiology is changing during that time and that perhaps the therapies we need to deliver are different depending upon the time frame of the patient during their arrest. So they said that the electrical phase lasts for the first four minutes or so after a patient collapses. A patient was awake, alert, at work, and then they have a cardiac arrest, they collapse and their heart's fibrillating. And there's this first four minutes that's the electrical phase. And the primary intervention then should be defibrillation. After four minutes or so uh, during the electrical phase, the person would enter the circulatory phase. And this will last from four to ten minutes um, after the onset of cardiac arrest, so about a six-minute period. And during this time, defibrillation might not be as effective unless you do some quality chest compressions first. After about 10 minutes or so, the patient enters the metabolic phase. And what they meant by this was that the injury that's accruing during this period of cardiac arrest, during this period of ischemia where there's no blood flow, that we're trying to supplement and give some blood flow to uh, by doing chest compressions, that injury will accumulate to a point in that me those metabolic abnormalities will take over and become uh, the dominant thing that's happening in that patient. And it's harder to get a person back into a normal heartbeat at this time to get their heart beating again or to get return of spontaneous circulation. And if the arrest does go along on this long, maybe we need other therapies to treat this person. So even if their heart starts beating, they may be comatose at that point in time. And if their heart doesn't stop beating, we need to think about other therapies such as emergency cardiopulmonary bypass. So we're going to talk about some of these future therapies today. And and I want to put it into the context of this three-phase model. So the essential question they were asking is if you look at this here, here is um, a graph of time and the chances of surviving. So at the beginning of a cardiac arrest that uh, can be treated with electrical defibrillation, there's a very high likelihood of surviving. But that likelihood goes down over time. And one of the things you need to think about is how long is it that a typical EMS, emergency medical services vehicle takes to get to a scene. If you're lucky, it's five minutes, but it may be eight minutes or ten minutes. So the fundamental question that Becker and Weisfeld was asking, were asking was, is the best treatment for ventricular fibrillation here at two or three minutes after arrest the same 
as the best treatment for ventricular fibrillation here at 15 minutes after arrest. And one of the things that I would pose to you is that it's not the same. And this is one of the fundamental insights we've had over the last 10 years into how to better manage patients who go into cardiac arrest. So let's look at this a little more closely. The electrical phase is the first phase after someone collapses when they have a shockable rhythm. And the most important thing at that point in time is early defibrillation. That doesn't mean that uh, the person shouldn't get chest compressions. Of course they should. While the uh, automated external defibrillator or the other defibrillator is being set up, the pads are being put on the patient and the machine is charging, the person should get chest compression so they continue to have some blood circulation. But the main focus should be on defibrillation. And why do we say this? Well, let's just look at one study that supports what we're saying. This is a really interesting study that Valenzuela and his colleagues did that was published in the New England Journal back in 2000. And what they did was they, they realized that in casinos in Las Vegas and other places, there were a lot of security cameras. And these security cameras were were there um, to watch people who were gambling. And they'd use these security cameras to see if people were uh, cheating, stealing money, um, using uh, people to tell them what the cards were and things like that. But what they also found was that they saw a lot of cardiac arrests on these security cameras. So they decided that they would train the security officers in the casinos to do basic CPR and instead of just running to a table where someone collapsed to get the AED on their way to that table. And then they looked at the next 105 patients who had witnessed, uh, had ventricular fibrillation arrests, so shockable rhythms, and 92 of those were witnessed on these security cameras. And they had a very quick time to shock, on average 4.4 minutes. And look at what they found. They found that um, on the left here, um, when patients were shocked in less than three minutes, there was 74% survival to hospital discharge. And when it was greater than three minutes, the survival was still 49%. So these are amazing results. And more important, this is before we had therapeutic hypothermia as a therapy. We started uh, using that the earliest places in 2002 or so after the, the landmark studies were published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2002. So these patients are before that therapy was available, but all the survivors were neurologically intact. So what does this tell you? It tells you that cardiac arrest is actually a treatable disease. That cardiac arrest that occurs from a shockable rhythm, if you treat it soon enough, you can get outcomes that are better than outcomes for a lot of other critical illnesses. And the problem is that goes down over time. We see that even in this study where all these people are having shockable rhythms and the majority of them are witnessed arrests, the survival goes down quickly from 75% to 50% just from the going from less than three minutes to greater than three minutes. So early on, the first phase of uh, cardiac arrest from a shockable rhythm, the electrical phase, the precedent should be on de early defibrillation, and that's the therapy that's going to save the most patients. After a period of time, that defibrillation might not work as well, and that's when the person's entered the circulatory phase. So at this time, high-quality chest compressions are very important. Doing those chest compressions delivers oxygen to the heart muscles, and the ATP, the adenosine triphosphate, that's the energy of the heart cells and all the cells in the body, and we'll talk about them more later when we talk about mitochondria.